well, six months ago, I was depressed, and it was Christmas time, and now it's the summer, it's Memorial Day, and I'm, I'm just radiant now. I'm just glowing that I've got my house, and it's mine, and no one's going to take it away from me, and I'm just happy. One day, I just happened to go out there to clean the yard, and I saw a sign that says we're starting to... Uh, on, uh, I think it was New Year's Eve, that was what they had told me they were going to put my house up for auction. So that I went, and this was like December 15th, two weeks before. So then I went in to see Ian and I told him all this. He called, they go, oh no, it's Christmas Eve, not New Year's, it was Christmas Eve. It's even worse than we had thought. You know, the economy goes bad, the stock market crashes, you know, your investments dry up into nothing. In my particular job where I work, there was no more overtime, they were laying people off. It was just a confluence of many bad things that happened all at one time that I don't think anybody could predict, you know. And still, you know, people still have credit card debt, they still have car payments, you know, gas, water, electricity, cable, phone. It's, it became a juggling act to like, what can I not pay this month and what can I pay this month? And it just got so overwhelming. So I was really stuck, you know, you know, and that's why I went to Fortress. Well, the minute you walk in, there's this calming influence like, don't worry, this is not going to really happen. They're just threatening you. They do this to everybody because you're the little guy, and they scare people into making payments, and then they still try and foreclose on them. So, so I'll handle this. We got to back into food. I mean, you're just a single guy now. Uh, right, to top ramen will get me through. That's so what I'm going to put three. And he said, "No problem. I've done this a thousand mm -hmm. times, and don't let them scare you." And he made me really feel confident that I wasn't going to lose my house because I didn't even know that I was that close to losing it. Yeah, this is Steve's house. This is, this is Steve Haggard's house right here. And if we didn't get involved, this house would have been taken and listed for sale and it's being a foreclosure. Um, one more house hurting everybody else's property values in the neighborhood. But, you know, we were able to renegotiate the deal with the bank and keep him in his house. Well, now, only 24 hours after first meeting Ian, I'm starting to feel better that I may be actually able to dig out of this hole. I didn't want to be one of these people that just walks away from a responsibility like I've seen some of my neighbors do. Um, I want to do the right thing. I want to pay my bills. I want, I want to accept responsibility for my actions. But, you know, knew, who knew that all these bad things would happen at once about the property losing half of its value in less than three years? Somehow, a year ago, we were on the verge of a, of, of a collapse and now the banks are about ready to report record profits. Every month the principal actually went up and I called several other banks and they all told me that I couldn't really get out of this loan and the loan was kind of had a high interest rate anyway so I was hoping to refinance and get out of that as soon as I could and then by the time I could get out of it and refinance into something else it wasn't worth what I got the original loan for. It wasn't worth half of what the original loan was for. At one time, it was worth over 300000 Now, as of today, it's only worth one forty-two, And the balance on this is almost two seventy. I was trying to do it myself. I was trying to negotiate with the bank. I explained the situation of how I got behind in the payments. At first, they told me that I wasn't in enough trouble yet for them to really help me that I should just do the best I could to make the payments. I called a couple months later and said I really am struggling here. I don't know what to do. I can't sell it. I can't get anybody to refinance me. Um, I filled out all the paperwork they asked me to. I sent it in. I never heard back. I tried again a couple more months later, falling farther and farther behind. And they asked me to send in, they sent me the same exact forms again to fill out, which I sent in again. And then you do that enough months in a row and they finally say, okay, now we're going to start foreclosure on you because you're not, you're not hitting the interest, you're not hitting the, the principal. And so then when you all of a sudden get that notice on your door that you're going to be evicted, basically, it's reality. I have nowhere else to turn to right now.
calls may be randomly monitored or recorded for quality and training purposes. I'm going to randomly monitor them too. Play Christmas music. Yeah. It's funny, I didn't know the Grinch played Christmas music. I have Mr. Haggard sitting here in front of me. I'm going to allow him to do a one-time authorization for me to speak to you on the phone. And they didn't want to talk to I, and the only one that threatened me. Everybody could hear how rude they were or how cold and, you know, just just the facts, not, not caring, not realizing this is a home, that there's people that live here, that there's pets that live here. Hey, Rudy. Okay. My name's Ian Hirsch. Well, uh, he's, what's the story? Do we have a modification offer on, on the table? That's when Ian basically took over, and it seemed like he just started reading them the riot act, like he knew exactly what to say, and all of a sudden they stopped with the threatening, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and they backed off. But your company has them on an uh, option arm with a negative amortization feature, where his balance has been going up every month, even though he's been paying the what is considered the minimum payment. And then I guess they started their professional dialogue with the paperwork. And, and then all right away, you automatically feel like there's a great weight lifted, especially that time of year. It's Christmas time. Uh, he went through a, a bad divorce that he's still uh, dealing with some repercussions from currently. Didn't even want to talk to me. That's just kind of, you know, they get to push you around. They don't get to push me around. Love me. I'll tell you what he said later. Yes, Up until that time, I just assumed I was going to have to find an apartment to live in. But I didn't want to leave my house. And I've been here for eight years, so it's not like, you know, I got in to try and flip the house. It wasn't, this is my home. No other properties, no other mortgages. Uh, at this time, it's him and him only. Gas, water, and electric together is $380. We have a HSBC credit card. We have a monthly minimum payment on that of about $50 per month. Oh, Providian. Forgot about that. Auto insurance um, that he's, he's paying for uh, education, and, uh, and that's 1000 a month. Um, we've uh, calculated that he would be uh, able to afford a $1,500 payment. We have that started immediately. So he's saying that they sent you documentation that you're going to get it foreclosed on back in August. Right. I mean, foreclosing on Christmas Eve. Let's foreclose on somebody on Christmas Eve. I don't care if it's like Scrooge that's passed you on his payments. You don't, you don't do that. They're just making it difficult. And that's right. their job, to make it difficult. That's fine. Okay, Mr. Hirsch. Yes. Has he been tentatively approved for HAMP? Okay, are we going to be able to get a postponement on the sale date? So he doesn't have to worry that on Christmas Eve it's postponed. Okay, very good. Thank you. Great. Bye bye. S sale date's been postponed. Woof! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay. So that, our Thank work's you. not done. Of course. Our work's not done. Now it just starts. You're going to get something in the mail. So when you get it, I want it that same day. Okay. All right, brother. All right. Smile. Have a great night. Thank you very much. Much later. Wow. wow. Um, it was a great weight lifted off my shoulders at that time. And then... Um, I know. You know, for the next couple of months, I just did what he told me to do. I responded to everything they do, they told me to do. I made copies of everything and um, just cooperated as much as I could and let him. I left myself in his hands. And then, you know, lo and behold, less than 90 days later, I get an agreement in the mail, went into the office, signed the paperwork, he faxed it in. Just I made payments out of right out of my bank account. Haven't missed a payment since. And it's actually knocking off the interest and actually some of the principal too. So I'm actually making progress now. But this house here, I mean, it's 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 a real house, and this is it. This is what we do. It's not a mansion. It's not something that somebody's trying to t put something over on the bank. But it's a real hardship. 
the property value has gone down and we solved the problem. We solved the problem. Got the loan current, kept him in his house. He's making payments on it now. The bank is accepting payments now. They're just smaller. This is it. This is a brick and mortar. This is what we're talking about here, the real deal. Well, things are much better now. Three or four months later, I'm catching up on all my other bills because now I don't have to dedicate so much money to the to the mortgage payment. Um, it has really been a great weight lifted off my shoulder and it's just now I don't have to worry about somebody coming and auctioning off my house home at work someday. You know, here's a situation where um, if Fortress Credit Services wasn't there, you know, who would be? You know, who would be there? Who is watching the banks? The banks don't want a company like ours to be in existence. So they're helping uh, push the legislators to pass laws to put a company like ours out of business, make it more difficult for us to be in business. And uh, why? Because the banks don't want a client to have good representation. You know, just like your insurance company, if you get in an accident, don't worry, you don't need an attorney. You know, we can handle this between the two of us. And that's exactly what the banks are trying to do with clients. You don't need a third party to help you out with this. We can just work this out between the two of us. How do they work it out? They take your house. It is my house. It is my home. I've been here for eight years, um, and I don't want to leave. So if it wasn't for him, I, still, I would be out of this home. And, you know, it is where I live. This is, you know, your house kind of identifies you. And um, I'm very proud of this home. And, you know, I went through 33 homes before I picked this particular one. They showed me 33 houses before I picked this one. And I didn't want to give it up. And I was willing to do anything I could to stay in it.